Hello, everyone, and welcome to the NECC quarterfinals. We got some playoff action for you, but first, I need to introduce this legend over here, Zach Tech. How are we doing, brother? I am doing fantastic. Absolutely pleased to be here. It's going to be a fantastic matchup. An absolute pleasure to cast with you, Hot Sauce. First time together. I'm sure it's going to be an absolute banger today. Yeah, it's going to be really exciting. I mean, both these teams, you know, honestly, uh, Onyx is the higher seed team, the number three seed, but Hawking Hills, as you had mentioned, we kind of talked briefly before getting in here. They met in week seven, and it was actually Hawking Hills who came out on top. Yeah, going all the way to game five. Don't know if it was a reverse sweep or it was a back and forth, but either way, the fact that these teams took it all the way to the fifth game means that I feel like today it could go either direction. Either of these teams could step up. They are both five and three, similar records, so... Honestly, I have no particular leanings either direction. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Like we mentioned, Onyx, that the higher C, but again, Hawking Hills beating them just a couple weeks ago as well in week seven. So certainly probably feeling some of that confidence as they get out onto the field. Uh, I know we got some rosters to look at here, and then uh, hopefully we'll get out on the pitch. Absolutely. Up first, OWU Esports. We've got Tyga, an economics freshman. Zem Ghost, a business freshman, and KW, an undecided freshman. Of course, lots of freshmen here coming in, the fresh blood, the fresh talent, uh, coming in with some good ideas. When I come straight off of the high school, you know, people say that the younger you are, the more better uh, mechanics you might have, uh, reflexes. So maybe we'll see that today. And uh, some very interesting, very smart uh, kids here. Well, not kids, freshmen, college. But uh, very excited to see what this team comes out with. And very excited to see what this next lineup is as well. All right, there it is for the Hawking College Hawks here in goal. We have Just Mo 12 in music production, a freshman as well, the real Logan, Associates of Science, a sophomore, and Grim Jow, Wild Resource Management, a sophomore as well. And I, again, I know we were talking briefly, you're a, a music in music production as well, so maybe a, a little bit of favoritism there. Perhaps just a little bit, uh, you know. True to my heart, music production. You know, really knowing the uh, tech and the musical artistic side of it. But we're going to see if they can bring some of these skills to the field and really make it happen here. Now, of course, like we said before, it went to game five against these two teams. And uh, if my record on NEC is anything to go by, uh, the majority of games I have casted here have been reverse sweeps. So really, I feel like this could go either direction. And whoever goes up to first uh, might be uh, one to watch out. Yeah, you know, I feel like more often than not, a lot of times these first games can be a little sporadic. So I really look for that second game to kind of tell me how, how it's going to play out, if we might see a best of five and things. But yeah, I, I want to, I'm, what I'm looking for basically is who's that more aggressive team, who's getting to the ball quicker, having that field domination as well. Uh, you, you always want to come out early and try to put that first one on the board when, you, when you're in these crazy playoff games. That first goal can be so important for morale for the team. And really sort of like, hey, we can do this. We can get past this defense and make something happen here. And now we've got 5 or 10 o'clock. Game one is here to go, and we have kick -off. All right, back and forth across midfield. Just Mo looking to carry it toward the net. The defense here, and they will carry out. Kind of double committing then a bit there, but doesn't come to haunt him here. Tyga fires one. The defense is there, and now booming back and forth as we thought. Kind of some wild sporadic plays here early in the first 20 seconds. So that movement out of Tyga, though, the patience to wait for the bounce to pop it over a player. Something I really like to see here in these early games. A lot of people coming out in the first game want to rush, want to play fast and hard and score early. But the fact that Tyga is showing that patience and that power is something I think is going to be a good sign that they are in calm, controlled form. And they got some good shots here going into the first minute of the game. Yeah, they've been pretty relentless with shot after shot. The double touch and Tyga will find the first goal. 50 not even off the clock. And they are here to make a point. A beautiful job rotating all the way back around to get it just in that bottom left corner. The defender was there, but he wasn't ready to get all for him to get all the way around that ball and redirect it back in. First goal over at OWU. That could spell some good signs for them. Like I was saying, the patience and the control here. A excellent job. The Tiger goes for the flip reset. Another shot, but it is blocked away. Yeah, Tiger certainly is showing some good mechanical skills here. Hawking has been on defense. They need to try to find some pressure out of their side of the field. Zimgo's firing in here as they look to find the defense. A lot of second and third chance opportunities so far 
for OWU, and we just we need to see maybe some more bumps, some demos to help create or alleviate some space for Hawking and see if they can find this equalizer here soon. A little space here to work as goes passing it to Tiger. He's going to shoot to the far corner off the post. Ooh, that is tough. The shot was there, but Maste going to put it in top left corner. The nice little soft lob shot. Yeah, again, just relentless on these shots. We see second and third chance opportunities, just shot after shot, and it's only a matter of time before they fall. Maystay will find this one, and OW Onyx will find themselves up by two with 3.30 left on the clock. Numbers now passing it out. I love to see these passes here, the connections being made by OWU. It's so important, being able to be in sync with your team had that synergy going through the first match is a great sign that this team has open communication, open signals, and that they are firing on all cylinders as a team. Yeah, oh, and just like that, Mace Tay will get another one. So they'll be chasing that hat trick here as well now. And again, uh, you know, we talked about how uh, Hawking had beat OWU previously in week seven. OWU has fired up three early ones here. Plenty of Rocket League left to be played, but certainly OWU putting on a showcase here in game number one. Yeah, maybe they thought, hey, that first matchup, you know, a bit of a fluke. You know, we sort of handed it over to you, so now we're going to prove that we were the better team, that we have this third seed for a reason. We're here to fight for it and to prove that we are here to take these playoffs all the way to the end, get to the grand finals. We're going to prove it starting here in the quarterfinals. All right. Well, we'll see if they can maintain this lead as we near the halfway point. Taiga on the aggressive attack yet again. The defense here looks to carry off the wall and just Mo carries that one out. The 50 will go in their favor. Grimjow on the back pedal passes backwards. Looks to carry this one out. Flips over and again. Kind of some midfield back and forth. Some booming clears. But it's really been OWU for the majority of the possession here in game number one. I'm loving the trust you're coming out of OWU. The ability to just blank it up, trust your teammate to go up for it. Here's something that Hawking needs to really pull together here. We've seen a lot of solo opportunities, solo shots, and plays downfield, but not a lot of connections for the passing play. And then we see a double commit. It seems the communication is just not quite there yet in this first game, but we do have some time to bring it together as a team, some time to figure out where those communications need to happen, and how to pull it together. But uh, with only two minutes left and down 3 0, Hawking Gold might have to look the next game to pull together. Yeah, you know, and even if you don't win this game as Hawking Gold, you still want to come out and try to find a goal or two, trying to build some of that confidence, that momentum before you head into game number two. Uh, you know, when these guys met in week seven, it was actually OW that took game number one, five to three as well. Hawking was able to come back in game number two and answer one to nothing. So, I mean, maybe a similar situation being played out here in the playoffs. We'll have to wait and see. History repeat itself. We do have to wait and see here as Ty got a shot opportunity, possibly through the back row and redirect it towards center. Anyone there for the shot? Not quite. Defense standing strong for Hawking Gold. Now, all three players in the box just waiting to get this ball away. It's going to be a miss there. Another shot opportunity, maybe. Sam goes to the back court off to the far side. Tyga now going to shadow Just Mo here. He's going to go downfield with the ball, but Tyga does take it away and keeps the danger away from his net. Yeah, and again, back on the attack, nearly carrying this one in, but a beautiful save coming in the way of Hawking College here as they look to press on the counterattack, knocking across midfield here, tapping at the goal, but not able to find anything. And again, the defense too good, a nice pass down midfield, high and dry, and I don't even know how that one didn't go in. Come on, a little play there. Just off the post, we saw a blue player there. Try to just tip it over the side, but a little too awkward there, but with three goals left, you got some time to let it bounce off to the side now. Giving up this pressure here to maintaining this offensive push is going to make sure the Hawking goal cannot break out. If they can really close out here, OWU, 3-0, possibly 4-0, no, off to the side. And that could be very crushing for the spirits of Hawking Gold. Yeah, I mean, OWU has just had some really phenomenal passing plays. Mechanically in the air, they've pretty, been pretty sound and solid. It, honestly, the rotations have been on point. The third man as well, constantly keeping that ball down on that Hawking College side. Uh, you know, unfortunately, Hawking just did, couldn't find any space. They were, they were on defense so much. They really didn't get that many shots on goal as well. And OWU kind of dominating that first, uh, first game. Yeah, the MVP here. OWU, Tiger really coming out. Shrimp has those 
flipper sets, those mechanics, as well as some of those outplays, the passing to his team is really on point, and the facilitation there for OWU has been massive. Hawking Gold looking to try to put something together here for game number two, and maybe, you know, like last series against each other, it just takes some time to warm up for this team. Hawking Gold, you know, game number two, this is where they have to prove themselves, hey, we can stay in this series, we can play competitively, and we're not going to get swept, and we're not going to get shut out either. Yeah, you know, maybe just some of them first game jitters they need to get out of the way. So, yeah, again, we saw a couple double commits, some minor mistakes coming in the way of Hawking, uh, Hawking College Gold, and I think OW just capitalized on that. So they just kind of need to minimize on those simple mistakes, work on those rotations as well, just kind of make allowing them to keep that ball on that blue side there. But, again, we saw them, you know, in, the, in week seven lose game one. They came out one game two, one to nothing as well. So, uh, again, maybe they'll be able to do that here. They've been in this situation before, so most certainly they have to be comfortable still. Being shut out on that first game can be so demoralizing. Not being able to have any openings or being able to break down the defense in any such way. And really going into game two, be like, okay, well, where do we start? We don't have any leads right now. We got maybe a couple balls downfield, but nothing really got past those corners or anywhere really near that net. So they have to get creative. They're going to have to figure out a way around because currently these solo plays, these launches downfield, getting easily intercepted and turned around to themselves. So Hawking Gold has got to get creative here, get these passing plays going, and really find this way maybe off the backboard, use the space they're being given by OWU to really take this game number two. Yeah, I mean, like most sports, you know, it, it is a physical game, but it's also a mental game as well, and you can't let game ones like that affect you, even though they can from time to time. So they just need to take a deep breath uh, just kind of reset, get into their 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 style that they're used to playing in. They know they've beat this team in a best of five before. So again, that mental aspect is very important here. Just take a deep breath, reset. I certainly think that they can come out and win that game. Obviously, a tough start in game one, not the showing that they wanted. Uh, but that's why you make up for it in game number two, right? Game number two is the place to make it up and prove yourself really coming out. This is possibly the mental reset they need. They've got a minute now to figure it out to have talk amongst each other, get the nerves down, get the jitters out. Game one, cool, it's out the window. We forget about it, we throw it behind us, we move on. And now we prove ourselves game two, we come back. We need some ferocity, some creativity, possibly some good speed. All right, out on the pitch for game number two, and Maste is gonna take it away, fires back, and already we have Maste with a score two seconds in, and we talked about how not scoring a single goal can be demoralizing. This equally can be as frustrating. Hawking College has got to get it together soon. So the defender, they get caught on the back line. Low boost, awkward positioning. That's not what you want to see here. A much better kickoff here. Some space now. Tiger going through the midfield. See the octane car change here. It's going to be a little more mechanical. But the flipper set doesn't quite come through. And it goes off to the side. Grim now. Trying to play some help here. Tiger. Up, looking for a teammate. The flip reset will put it down and in the Sheesh. second goal put in by Tiger just under the crossbar. Yeah, just a flashy play after flashy play, and Tiger kind of showcasing the aerial control, the mechanical ability as well as Tiger finds another, and it is early chasing that hat trick already. I don't know what the lineup was for the last series with each other, but we do know that OW has a large list of players, I think nine, possibly playing throughout this season together. So maybe it was just Tiger was not in that game, but maybe he's here to really prove himself, pull out some of these mechanics and show that, hey, look, I can really pull this team up, I can help them out, we can really play together, and we can prove right now that this is third seed material, possibly first seed, you know, and this offense right now going up 2-0 in the first minute is quite compelling. Yeah, you know, one thing I really like about this OWU team as well is after they find a shot or after they find a pass, they're looking for more. As they're rotating out, they're looking for that demo or that bump to help that teammate that they just passed to as well. So they're looking for that extra play after a play, and that's certainly what it takes to make a green uh, a team great. So play there for Tyga, almost swinging his way all the way down the field. As he get past the last defender, it does Ooh. just Mo able to put it in if you're getting demoed. Taking it downfield, the center there. Oh, defenders just pushed too far forward. OW got a little too comfortable on the offense there. Defender just couldn't quite get back to it. 
Yeah, I mean, that can happen when you're dominating and you have a lot of possession, maybe kind of cheating forward just a little too much. And, well, Hawking Gold did exactly what they need to do, make them pay for those minor mistakes. Now, one away from the equalizer. Plenty of time left in this game of Rocket League. We'll see if Hawking College Gold can fight to find one more. If OWU will be able to stop them and put them at match and series point. I'm going off to the side here. Rebecca, though, will get the ball away. The center for OWU, but the defense does hit it away there off to the side. Quick follow up, but it's lost to Tyga. Tyga going to put it towards net, but the defense does get back. Now, looks like it's a bit of a scramble here on the defense. Try to get boost. Looks like they are low. Getting starved here. It's going to be tough to try to maintain this backline defense. Yeah, now on the counterattack, though, pushing in a hurry. Tiger's going to rotate across midfield. A dangerous pass, but nobody's there for Hawking, and will carry it off the wall. Now to the ceiling, looks to keep that arrow control. Fires one, and the defense is there, and a nice save from Hawking Gold. They need to find the counterattack here. Still plenty of time, though, as we near the halfway point. Only down by one is Hawking Gold. Oh, and seeing the awkward play there, the real Logan coming in to tap it over the last defender. Two, three players all caught in the exact same spot. He saw the mistake and he put it home, tying it up 2-2. Two, two. And Hawking Gold now back in the running for this game number two. Yeah, just so much time here. So now they have to feel comfortable, able to fight back anyone's game at this point. And again, almost a repeat of what happened earlier in the season. So we'll see if they can continue and power forward here. Tiger's going to get that one taken from him at midfield. The shot on goal, but the defense is still there. Zimgos looks to find the clear. Going to be fighting. Doesn't win the 50 here. And now the ball floating in a dangerous zone. Tiger will look to carry out over the head. And now the defense on the back pedal. Hawking able to get there in time. But they have to be careful about overcommitting here. Now going down, looking for the passing play here. It goes just a little too far forward, so no connection. Can get bounced center though off the wall, and now he's got space to work with. Two players down the midfield. Big flick goes up off the side while Tiger trying to get some control here. Them goes through the middle, but back to the orange player that goes to that top high. He's going to throw away possession. It means there's an opportunity here for a shot off the back foot. It goes. We will stay with the 2 2 score line. Yeah, Tiger looking to find the attack off the wall, passing to midfield here, but will be sought out. Zimgos looks to keep it alive. That third man rotation coming into play. Tiger with a dirty play here. That one's going to hit the early crossbar or the post, excuse me, as Mace Tay will keep this one alive again. We talked about how good OWU is at keeping possession down here on the Hawking side. And right now, they're just uh, really putting on a display of that. These orange players here. Hawking Gold needs to have some good ways to fall to these clears. They've got some decent plays to make it downfield. They're going to follow it up, maintain control, and that possession just gets thrown back to OWU. And the only way they've really been able to score is catching OWU too far forward or in the same spot. As that's a team bump, going to throw Tyga off of his shot. And that is rough. And luckily, a clean break for Hawking Gold here as that ball is going to stay away from the net. Yeah, they tried to go across midfield again here, nearly getting that one taken away. Tiger looking for the flip reset, the razzle dazzle, and Tiger will find another one to put OWU up on top with 48 seconds remaining. Oh, I've seen the said so many times, but Tiger here now turning it into a wave dash on the bottom to get under the last man. So they both went up. Beautiful drop to spot that hole in the defense and just slide it on in. 45 on the clock, plenty of time for Hawking to find this equalizer, but they got to keep it in gear here as OWU has been a great job, or doing a great job of keeping that possession on this Hawking side. Back and forth here, the booming clears as they wait to get this one settled again. The ball in front of Hawking's net, not the touch they needed as well. And again, sitting in a dangerous position, Zimghost is going to make them pay, and that's going to most likely be the nail in the coffin for game number two. All boosting caught all in the same spot. Hawking Gold was just sitting ducks right there for Zemkos to slot it in behind him. And that means that game number two is most likely going to go over to OWU. Not something you want to see for Hawking Gold here, but 25 seconds will give an opportunity. It is nigh impossible, but not improbable. Well, nigh improbable, but not impossible. There we go. <laughs> two goals in 17 seconds, though. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, just not enough time on the clock, especially against this OWU team who's done a great job of keeping ball possession, boost consumption as well. We've seen them often starving, hawking from the boost. And again, just uh, the slightly better team here in game two. I like the improvements that Hawking College made here in game number two, uh, but unfortunately it just wasn't enough as OWU really 
just all over the field. They seem to have a little bit better rotations and kind of double committing just a little less as well. The thing I really saw in this game number two is the fact that OWU was able to, on their intercepts, on their clears, be passing it to a teammate on the side wall or in the midfield. It was never out to space or just into uh, a defender, but really to their teammates. It's whether they maintained possession all the way down the field on the conversion, something that Hawking Gold just couldn't quite seem to do. A lot of their clears, a lot of their sends downfield were not to uh, their own player, but just into space or to an opponent. And ultimately, that giveaway of possession cost them four goals, in a, um, which only two they were able to respond to. And that means that yeah, and, and, now going into game three here, it's a tough and, game. And, and one of those two really was kind of a free goal just because OWU was so overconfident, kind of cheating forward after getting so many goals. We saw that that big breaking, you know, booming clear that they were able to steal a goal. But yeah, you're absolutely right. All these booming clears really just to, uh, to the opponent. So they're not able to come away with any solid plays. We haven't seen too many pass plays, some give and goes. Really not even that many shots on goal against this OWU team. So I would like to see Hawking just a little bit more aggressive. But we do need those quality shots, not just the quantity. Quality's got to come out here in game three now. It's going to be a first offensive for WU. Not a good sign. Tiger again, though. The MVP, the main striker for OWU at center. And the shot comes out. Not quite to the target. So now the real Logan can take us downfield. Try to maintain possession. Follow it up. A decent 50 minutes goes up high, but Macy gets to it first. Now WU is going to maintain this offensive pressure. Yeah, nice clear here across midfield as well. Looking for that help, but not quite there this time. As Grim jump will be taken away from and again floating in front of the net a big demo here nothing able to come from that one may stay will find a bump and just most still able to regain and find the defensive stop the demos are coming out left and right they fire the shot zim ghost there on the defense as well and well this is certainly a more aggressive game than we've uh, seen so far oh but taiga again showing off that offensive prowess Going for the flip reset and then the dunk at the end. OWU showing up for game number three. Looking for a clean sweep. And they are starting off strong. Yeah, Tiger definitely has mad skrills. And they're certainly putting on a clinic here in this series. Up by one. OWU looking to get out the brooms and find the sweep here. As the, they were bested in week seven by Hawking Gold. But... Certainly looking to answer back big as they are hungry for this sweep here. Uh, 350 on the clock, already up by one. Offensive opportunity here for that miss. It's a clearing opportunity here. Taiga is going to be striking fear into the hearts and a fake there. He's going to go past one, the bump pass fake. It means Taiga is able to slam one home. I mean, just a, just a one-man wrecking crew at the moment, a juggernaut, if you will, putting on a display, and goal after goal after goal from game to game to game. You called Taiga the MVP, and it's certainly for a reason. He's showing it here in all three of these games. Just an outstanding performance by Taiga. Now long lob shot, almost went in with the defense. He's just there for it. OWU now. On the defensive, the place they haven't been super often as Tiger though, now going downfield, zooming as a bump stretch come on the defense, but he stays strong. And Hawking Gold, not giving him a third goal quite yet. Three minutes left to go, plenty of time to come back. Right now, all defensive pressure is in the hands of OWU. They're not willing to let go of it. Yeah, again, just quicker getting to the ball as well, and maybe it's due to that boost starting that they've been doing. A nice shot opportunity here, but again, no second chances coming for the way of Hawking. The counterattack, and Tyga from downtown yet again finds a goal and a hat trick for game number three. That speed and those connections, teammates is what's been giving OWU the lead in both of these games, and really just the offensive uh, advantage here and the boost starving as well we saw just really limited hawking gold on those defensive plays and they just could not get enough boost and enough power onto these shots to make it go home it's off the crossbar though it's going to be dangerous but the defense does get to it first so off the wall well, bounce center and with no boost in their tank nothing can happen here and go center again another shot coming out for owu to go far down field the offense able to get back just in time for the defense yeah, OWU really just executing their plan nicely here on all aspects of the field. Offense, defense, 
field possession, boost consumption, you name it, playing to a T so far today. And well, that's why they find themselves here at series point. Hawking though, Grimjow will find one, 2.12 on the clock. There is plenty of time, but OWU is not gonna make it easy for them. Yeah, spotting the defense out of place, being a little too aggressive against OWU. So they gave us some of their previous goals and they can shut down here the rest of the game. Recognize that they have the ability to maintain some good defensive pressure and stay on top of the Tigers gonna go downfield again. And we pass center off the corner. And now the real world after the play here off the backboard. Is the shot coming in? It will and Tiger putting home a fourth row WU. Yeah, I mean, again, we just talk about how they get so many second and third chance opportunities. We'll see one off the wall there from Zim. Tyga in great positioning, able to finish this one off with fierceness. That one on home, now up by three. Hawking Gold has to begin to feel this one slipping away. They need to make a stand here soon, but it's hard, right? Just Mo, though, comes out with a quick one, and that's the answer they need here. An aggressive cheat means that no one's home on the defense. Just Mo able to put one home, reclaim a second goal for Hawking. And that would be you. The lead has been cut in half down to 4-2. 153 left. Is that enough for Hawking Gold to reclaim a victory away from OWU? We will see. I think it's going to, certainly going to be very, very tough, as we mentioned. Not impossible, but highly unlikely, unless they start putting this work together soon. And Zim Ghost is certainly going to make that doesn't make sure that happens. But with another house. So again, it's just going to be really, really tough for this Hawking College team. If they're able to find a goal here or there, but they don't really have an answer or a way to slow down this OWU team. Hawking goal thirsty for boost on the back line, and that means that they're just going to be starved again and again here. The speed to all of their possible resources to vanish. That goes of the posts. And real Logan here trying to clear this out off to the side on downfield. Back to the defense with that back pass means going to get past some of that offensive pressure. And now, out of their own half, Hawking Gold going to find a way here. Make an offensive drive in the last minute 10. We'll see a minute 10. Still plenty of time in the crazy game of Rocket League, but it is going to be tough against this tough team. And the demos are still coming out. The ball knocking at the net here is just Mo. Tries to find one, but Zim goes with the clear. Now high and dry across the ceiling. Tiger's got it. You got to look out. And just small. We'll be able to steal this one off the wall. The booming clear. Not there, though, as Grimjow has to pull out the defensive stop. Tries to get it over the head. This team is relentless. Shot after shot. An absolute firing squad. But Hawking Gold able to somehow come away with that defensive stop. With half a minute left. OWU is looking to maintain this pressure, maintain possession, and maybe try to put home another one. A sixth goal, a nail in the coffin. And as they keep going here, flip for a set, another shot. The defenders, though, going to make sure that goes away. But the follow-up shot is there for, and it goes in. Six to OWU, 20 seconds left. And that has got to be the last nail in the coffin here. Yeah, you know, going to be going to be taking this one in sweeping fashion here. OWU again, you know, out for vengeance, right? They lost uh, in a 3-2 series earlier in week seven to Hawking College Gold. So now in the playoffs, just out for this vengeance, certainly doing it in dominating fashion as well as it will take it three games to none here. But again, hats off to both teams for even making it this far. A lot of talent out on the field here today. Both teams up today, as well as OWU and Taiga, the Angel of Doom, spelling the doom of Hawking Gold here as Zem goes to put away gold number seven. Not quite a Brazil, but I think the point has been made. OWU will move on to the semifinals. Yeah, and, and you know, as you mentioned, how big this roster is, you got to wonder if that, you know, during those losses, if Taiga was in play, if Zim Ghost was there, because they certainly had a really great team chemistry and uh, certainly looking better than a number three seed out there today, in my opinion. Yeah, they really showed up, and Taiga, we were calling him the MVP, you know, the entire time, and he really just showed up the flipper, the mechanical ability, those flipper sets, the wave dash shots, just outplaying all of Hawking Gold, and that really, I think, was the difference maker here between these two teams. Yeah, I mean, he just had great aerial control, the mechanical ability, the flip resets, knowing when to fake them as well. And 
uh, really drawing in those defenders, kind of causing them to double and triple commit, feeling like they needed to add that pressure against Tiger. So certainly the playmaker out there today. It was a lot of fun to watch. I know there's uh, more great games coming up here, though, Zach. Yeah, lots of much more ga great games. We have another game coming up soon after this one, which will be myself and Oddfell, and that is Mount Union Purple versus Illinois Springfield. So don't go anywhere. That is going to be at 6.30 p.m. EST. Again, thank you all for coming out for this first game. It's been an absolute pleasure casting with you, Hot Sauce, and we will see you all after a very short break.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to more NECC Rocket League action. My name is An Odd Fellow. Joining me on my that direction is Zach Tech. How you doing tonight, brother? I'm doing fantastic. We had an absolutely wonderful first series tonight. It was a 3-0 sweep, but we had some close games there. But now we've got another game lined up, and I think it's going to be a fantastic one, Odd Fellow. It's going to be just an absolute banger. I'm excited for both of these teams, and I think we have some lives for you to show you. Absolutely. Uh, so to start things off, we are going to have Mount Union Purple, University of Mount Union. Uh, and this lineup is going to consist of Candy Guy, Thunder, and Zanny. So a senior and two freshmen. Quite the uh, gap there, but hopefully maybe that means that there's some uh, senior, you know, experienced veteranness that uh, can help coach these Thunder and Zanny. Really bring together uh, you know, that sort of solidifying uh, knowledge and calmness maybe from someone who's older helping out these young guns but we'll have to wait and see maybe it's just thunder and they're going to show up and just maybe carry their te old teammate but now we've got university of illinois springfield here becky slothish and sniper uh, a bunch of juniors so a bit older here in the middle of the pack but uh we're gonna see we have a computer science and business administration so a little bit of uh mathematics here some computer works maybe it's going to come onto the field see some uh, interesting creative plays maybe it's going to be very calculated very mechanical uh, we have to wait and see now this has all the potential to be an extremely interesting matchup this is the number one seed in mount union versus the number eight seed in university of illinois springfield so zek mount union's coming into this with a record of eight and zero. illinois springfield has two and six they met in week one and Mount Union won that matchup three to one. Do you think we're going to see a repeat of that? Or do you think after the course of the season, Illinois Springfield might have a chance to take this one and kind of cause an upset early? My guess is that at best, Illinois Springfield's going to get two of the five possible games here. Now, we have not seen them win uh, very many series. One of their wins actually was because of a forfeit. So technically, Illinois Springfield's only won one series all season. And who knows, maybe with, you know, the seven weeks in between, they've devised a plan to take them out in Union. But currently, I don't think that's going to happen. But we have to wait and see. The gameplay will speak for itself here as game number one has started. And Ooh. the passing play just going wide. The backflip makes sure the shot doesn't come through. No one people have to clear this out here. I like seeing that that sight early on in the game from Mount Union to be able to uh, look for those kind of passing plays. Like you said, unfortunately, Zanny hitting the backflip there, not quite able to connect with the pass, but Mount Union's looking for it. So that's something that Illinois Springfield is going to have to look out for throughout the course of the night. So we're going to see Becky here trying to play this one out of the left-hand corner. The offense from Mount Union just absolutely dominant so far in the first 60 seconds, not allowing Springfield to get anywhere as the pitch comes in from Candy Guy, but does get saved away by Illinois Springfield. Center here, possibly for a shot, but Becky able to clear that away. Slothish now working his way through the backfield, trying to make something happen here. He's now two on the goal line. Another Ooh. shot coming in, and Thunder will put home the first goal from Mount Union. And this is just an unfortunate series of events. It looks like a, an unfortunate back touch there by Becky. Sniper is forced to kind of scramble to turn it away and just isn't able to get a hard enough shot on it to uh, actually get it out of the box. So Thunder just being right there, smacking that one home. Three minutes, 48 seconds left to play. Mount Union up top on one, but... This kickoff going the way of Illinois Springfield, so maybe we see the table start to turn here before the halfway point in game one. Ooh, that has a chance as Becky's shot is turned wide. I believe that was Zanny turning that one away. Shot opportunity something we really like to see out of these teams. I think they can put something near on net with Beacon. Having a scramble on back is a good sign that they have some offensive prowess here that they can surprise Mount Union with. Thunder trying to pass it down to Zanny again. I, I like seeing that. Like I said, Candy Guy trying to come in as Zanny gets another backflip. So all three players from Mount Union were up. Illinois Springfield has a chance, but Thunder is able to get back quickly and save that one away. I'm liking the speed I'm seeing so far from Mount Union. Illinois is getting these opportunities. They just have to capitalize on them as Slothish. Not able to win that 50 with Candy Guy. Candy Guy off the backboard looking for Thunder. Trying to put it top post. Not able to get it as that, I believe, is going to be Becky turning that one away. A little bit of offense starting to go the way of Illinois Springfield, but as of yet, they have yet converted into points. A sniper here trying to keep it going, but 
Clear downfield means that it's back down to the last man to clear it out here. I think he's downfield looking for redirect. Possibly no, the fake out. No, team Ooh. play. Ooh, just off the post. And that was some creativity that we like to see out of Springfield. And again, Springfield is getting these good offensive pushes going. They just have to be able to capitalize on them. I'd like to see some more passing plays as this one has a chance of a fantastic shot from Sniper. And he is going to snipe it in from the 50-yard line. After the pressure, seeing Thunder was awkward, taking his time, and then able to find out the hole on the defense. They're seeing no one was back in time. That's a great job to equalize here with just under half the game left to go. It's people here having a chance here in game number one to take it. And that goal actually kind of leads into something I was going to bring up about Mountain Union. I'm liking the aggression and the offense that I'm seeing out of them, but that goal shows why they have to be careful about how they do it and make sure that their third man is in a position to be able to get back quickly to avoid turnaround goals like that. And speaking of, off the backboard with the pass to Candy Guy was Thunder, and that is going to be Mountain Union regaining the one-goal lead. Great passing play there. The defense is not quite back in time. Having to jump at an awkward angle to read off the backboard, but any guy was there first to slam at home. And a 2-1 lead here. Two minutes left to go. Plenty of time to come back. Only Springfield right now having their goal peppered with shots. Yeah, and that's what you're going to see out of an aggressive team like Mount Union. Again, these guys are the number one seed. They know what they're doing. They're really not trying to deal with an upset this early on. They have the skill and the potential. And again, they beat Illinois Springfield in week one. So they're trying to make sure that uh, Springfield doesn't start getting that Cinderella story going early as Candy Guy's going to fire that. Oh, that was Becky was looking for the touch mid to send it away, but wasn't able to get it. So Candy Guy gets the cross goal. Cross, pitch, goal. Eh. Yeah, the patience there from Kenny Guy. Wait for the ball to come to him. Wait to bait out the players of the Springfield team. They go a little farther forward and then just slamming it down into the open net. Great job, great patience there. That type of control you want to see at Mount Union. Thunder trying to keep this one in play. Looking for the pass down to Zanny is old. Oh, that almost had a chance. Mount Union was looking for something spicy, but Zanny unfortunately getting a little bit too underneath the ball and popping it up towards the crossbar. Sniper turning this one away. Candy Guy with the whiff, so Sniper has another chance at an open net here, but that is going to be, I believe that was Zanny getting back quickly and getting that save off the backboard. Thunder losing that 50 in the corner, but Candy Guy is there in support off the left wall. Passing it mid, Thunder not quite able to get there in time, so that's going to be Becky with the carry, not able to send that one into the net. Thunder, dangerous pass across his own net, but none of the players from Illinois Springfield were there to capitalize. 45 seconds left to go here, Zach, and Springfield has got to get something going if they do not want to lose this game one. Yeah, but the lack of control here, being pressured on their own back line, not able to get enough boost to really send this out and maintain control throughout the midfield. He said it's all Mountain Unit traffic. So the Cavaliers, they push home another one. Thunder securing goal number four for them. And again, that reckless offense really working out for Mount Union here just because Illinois Springfield aren't quite able to get the big clears. But this was a really, really good job by Thunder to key in on the fact that this that goal had a chance. He just needed to be there to help push it through because Candy was a little bit awkward. So great offensive push there from Mount Union results in the fourth goal of the game. 20 seconds left to go here. Three goal advantage for Mount Union. Make that four as they slam home the fifth goal of the game. That's a beautiful pass by Thunder. He's got some space to work with off the ceiling. A quick pass down. <laughs> Just getting to it first. Zanny spotting it out, slamming it home. That is a nice five to one lead. 20 seconds left. And I think this is game one lockdown for Mountain Union. Oh, I think that's pretty safe to say at this point, Zach. But you know what they say about third time's the charm. That was the third time that Thunder tried that exact play to Zanny. And finally, it's able to work. Slothish, though, saying, hey, we're not quite done yet. Punishing the misplay by the defense here, getting up to it first. The speed, a great job reclaiming a goal. Obviously, some momentum here. That's what you really want to do for Springfield here. And obviously, you maybe can't lock down this game number one. But getting momentum going to game number two, getting some positive vibes going, is going to really push yourself to a positive place and possibly a victory in game number two. That's exactly what I was going to say. Sometimes you don't necessarily, it, when you're down like this in the first game, just getting that last goal is, is, is enough to help you out. As Thunder tried to make it Mount Union, getting the last goal there, but was turned away at the last second. So, last laugh going to University of Illinois Springfield. Now, that was a bit of a blowout. Three goal win, seven games of Rocket League.